Hasbro produced some of the best Star Wars figures ever. I'll just say it and just get it out there. Kenner developed some early ones, which are of course quite valuable nowadays and have a lot of nostalgic and sentimental value. But I think a lot of us can agree, particularly a lot of us that are here watching today, that Hasbro, in line with the Clone Wars TV series, created some of the best figures that anyone could come across. Not only was the designs of the battle packs, the color schemes, who was in them, but the figures themselves, the detail, the color, the articulation, the accessories that came with them, and the abilities that you could do with them, which was the posing, the moving the helmets around, the potential to have customization with a lot of the figures and some of the figures that we'll look at here. I think we can all agree that they did an absolutely fantastic job and Disney, in their infinite wisdom, canning all of that stuff and uh, unfortunately binning the Clone Wars in favour of bringing in the Bad Batch, which, to be honest, personally wasn't really requested. I think they had a good thing going with the Clone Wars and I just don't think they could see it. But that's my opinion. But what we're here to talk about today is some of the named figures from the TV series, particularly from the 501st, and a couple of the custom ones that we have that I've added into my collection. And the purpose of these videos as well is to show off a bit of the collection that we've got here, have a bit of appreciation, uh, and to give others inspiration in terms of what they might, might want to do with theirs. If you've got any customs that you want to create, we've got some designs here that we've implemented, and we can show you how they've turned out. But the mainstay in everyone's collection is obviously a Captain Rex. Everyone's got to have one as part of their collection. We've got two here, the Phase 1 and the Phase 2 Rex. Uh, both are the dirty variants, which I think are the most realistic. We see the Phase 2 Rex here is the dirty variant, most closely recognisable on Umbara. Uh, the articulation was not too crash hot with them. I don't believe there was a lot you could do with the legs. Uh, he's obviously missing the jetpack on the back there. His helmet was quite clean, which made no sense at the time, still makes no sense now, and the body was discoloured. Whereas you look at the Phase 1 Rex, the helmet itself was detachable, wasn't on a ballpoint. The body itself was dirty, uh, there was no need for anything on the back, emulating what he looked like when he was fighting on Teth in that initial movie, which was fantastic and just really broke the series through. But they're a mainstay in everyone's collections. Everyone's got a Rex. There's a couple of Rexes we don't have here. We've got about 15 different, well, not different, but we've got about 15 Rexes here, about six variants of it. We've got the one that comes in a double pack with, I believe it's Echo. Uh, and that one's different because it's got the blood on the hand. If I've got that here nearby, I'll bring it in. But he's got the blood on the hand, which is a, which is a variant of Rex that not a lot of people have. But if you, you should quickly check in your collection if you've got one because they go for significantly more than the others. The only other one we don't have here is the Rex that's found in the uh, Bark Speeder Pack, which from what I understand is a European-only exclusive. I've only ever seen it sold on websites in France. They were not available here in Australia. They were not available in the United States. They were only available in Europe, and I, to be honest, have no idea why. Uh, but it includes Rex and a dark blue 501st with a Bark Speeder Bike. Very elusive, very hard to come across. They're two or three hundred each uh, in the ones that I've seen, but I haven't seen one for quite a while now. But that's one of the ones we're missing. So we get a good look for those two. Everyone's got those two. We can pass, move those guys on. We'll bring in two more mainstays that just about everyone has, and that, of course, is Echo and Fires in their phase one. These guys were a fantastic design. They came in the Defend Camino battle pack. Uh, I was very fortunate in that the town I grew up in had a toy store uh, where no one was buying them. And they just had a whole row on the shelf that was just full of them. They're going for about $35, and I bought about five of them. Uh, opened one. We've got one in the mint condition box just behind us here uh, in the back. Uh, but these guys were a fantastic figures to have. They had beautiful design on the legs. The handprint, obviously, on Echo there. They were very articulated. Some good designs here. Uh, on fives. He's obviously got the Rishi Moonworm on his helmet, which was you know exclusive to him. The helmets do come off, uh, but just for the purposes of the pose here, we'll leave that on. Another good mainstay in every collection. Getting a bit pricey now, unfortunately, about fifty dollars each, Australian that is. To get it in the battle pack, it, it pretty much triples every time. Obviously, you get blitz in there, but you get a bad, badly damaged pack. You drop a lot of price, but you keep a good one in great condition. 
value just continues to skyrocket. Uh, we'll bring in another mainstay now, keeping a bit boring early. Uh, but of course, Denor appeared in season one. I don't think there's any need for spoilers here. We all know that unfortunately he was killed uh, by Cad Bane as he tried to escape uh, Republic custody pretty much. And we're going to bring him in for all that stuff that he was doing. Denor, though, a mainstay in the 501st. I believe there's apparently he, he appears on Teth. I didn't quite spot him, but apparently he's there. Uh, then he's on the, there's like a, sonar station or a radio station in the clouds in one of the episodes with uh, Goldie, the traitor, astromech droid. And Donald's there, of course, with the jetpacks. And then when they capture, try and capture Cad Bane on the, uh, one of the battleships in space, and Donald's unfortunately killed there. Good character. One of the first distinguished uh, characters that's obviously not Rex or just a generic white armored clone. It's one of the first that's given a name and spe specific details being the helmet design, which, from what I understand, doesn't signify too much other than it's just a differing design. But they kept it simple, uh, which got them good results. And very popular figure. Again, him and Box is looking upwards of about $70 to $80 Australian. Uh, so pretty tidy when you're looking to pick him up. Loose, you can get him a little bit cheap. But another one of those named clones, a popular mainstay in everyone's collection. I'll bring in one of the customs now. This is a Phase 2 Blue 501st figure. We haven't got a name for him at the moment. But he's got some tallies on his helmet there indicating his kills. He's just a Phase 2 White clone uh, that we wanted to adapt as a 501st member. Some blue on the legs there. Blue on the ribs. Really beautiful helmet. Nice and crisp. As we look there, got him with that specific Phase 2 Blaster, if any of you guys have seen that. It's different to the uh, DC Blaster that you get with all the basic generic clones. Once you pick up a Phase 2 White Clone Trooper, they had this different designed DC Blaster, which had that longer bit at the top just here, uh, which gave the thumb and fingers on the opposing hand here a lot more to grip onto. It was harder to knock out if you, for say, dropped it. Not that we ever wanted to do that. Quick look up there, that's the design, see how it turns out. Not particularly skilled enough to get it into the cheekbones there, into that crevice. Not bad nonetheless. Now I've got time for another custom here. So this one I've named Konig, which is the German for King. As you can see here, we've done a good paint job on him. He's got the dual blasters. Going to wreak some havoc on some separatists. We've got a commando droid insignia there, obviously indicating that he's not a fan. Just a basic uh, blue V line. A little bit of blue on the side there. And the blue stripe on the arms. Really simple helmet design. We've got the blue fin and then just the blue cheekbones, but really makes him really distinguished and actually makes the uh, black of the visor stand out. He's got a little bit of blue there along the top of his visor. So we've got Konig there. He's one of our named clones in our collection here. And we'll move him on. We'll bring in two more guys that are very popular. And a lot of you will be happy to see. We've got Kicks with a backpack and then of course Hard Case. Guns come a bit loose there, but that's okay. Both of these guys were difficult to find initially. Obviously, Kick's coming in that uh, Hunt for Grievous battle pack. He was a great design. Great figure there, just beautiful. Really slick design. Was articulated. Uh, didn't come with a backpack, but about just about every time that we saw him in a TV show, we had one on him, obviously, when he was helping blokes out. The fin there, it was amazing that they put all this design into making him look absolutely fantastic, but then some other figures just got absolutely zero attention, you know, and, and Hasbro was willing to focus on other things. We look at hard case as well. I'm not sure what's going on with my focus here. Hard case there, he had a lighter blue, uh, as he did on the show, but definitely distinguishably lighter 
uh, as he was an action figure. Both of these guys had limited articulation, particularly on the chest. There was not a lot of movement there. They were just a solid pl plastic piece. Uh, but a mainstay about everyone's collection. Uh, these guys are getting dear now as well. To get each of these blokes is probably about between $60 and $70. It's getting really up there. To get them in their respective battle packs, it, it costs significantly more. Pretty sure Hard Case came in that Republic pack. I think there was a Bomb Squad bloke in there as well. Also quite quite difficult to find at times and get at a good price. Well, the Hunt for Grievous battle pack, very popular, very beautiful design. Um, looks very good. Had Grievous with the cape. So they're getting up there as well. Two more name clones from the TV series, of course. Uh, another one that's popular, that's getting very popular now, especially with what happened in Season 7, uh, was, of course, Jesse. His ultimate demise in Season 7 you know, was, was a tough watch, but something that needed to happen and really gave a lot of impact to the show. Loyal till the end to the Republic, unfortunately. Uh, just couldn't see what, what Rex was seeing. I know he had his chip taken away, but... Again, really great design. A lot of a lot of effort put into it. It's a, it's another plastic uh, solid body, but good articulation. Obviously, on the hips for the bark speeder, um, the elbows as well. So this figure comes in a a uh, bark speeder pack, which is quite popular to find. Uh, sorry, very very difficult to find in a good condition. As we set him here. We've got one just sitting on the side here. It's about one of six or so that we have. Really beautiful. Trying to keep these in as best condition as we can. No yellowing yet on any of the plastic or the figure, so we're doing quite well with this one. And we'll pop him back. But yeah, Jesse, very popular in a lot of people's collections, and rightfully so. Uh, he appears in a significant amount of episodes in the show. We get a good a lot of exposure to him, particularly on Umbara, later in Season 7, The Hunt for Grievous on Seleucami. Lovely figure there. Like I was saying, getting a bit pricey though. The, the um, battle pack itself can become quite expensive, particularly to get one in really, really good quality and a lot of dents, no yellowing. To get the figure himself, he's also similar to Kicks and Hard Case. He's kicking around, you know, $60, $70, but you can get him at much better deals. But another named figure. Another named figure of the 501st. Who have we got over here? We've got another pair of friends appearing in only one episode. It was, of course, Mixer and Red Eye. Uh, they're, of course, killed on the Coronet by the Assassin Droid, which also is a great battle pack for anyone that has it. We've got maybe two or three here. Two, two and one to be opened because of its damage. Uh, but just having these guys here together is, is, again, a mainstay of every person's collection. You've got to have them if you're a 501st fan. They are a great design, very slick, very simple, just the arms being painted, a little bit of touch on the helmet. Uh, I'm not sure which one he is. I think he might be Mixer. Uh, in terms that he's got on the top here almost the opposite design uh, to Denal. And I believe this one's Red Eye, but I could be wrong in this moment. They kept it simple, simple design. Guy's got about 20 seconds or less of screen time in the show, and they made a figure out of him, which was amazing. But other characters, they get significantly more time, not even considered. Uh, when I was w w like watching it when I was younger... Uh, I thought someone like Cries, being the uh, bloke from the 212th in Kenobi and Cody's division, he got some screen time. He surely would have got a figure if these guys did. Uh, but no, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, they created that battle pack, I think, purely to sell the Assassin Droid to get that out there. Uh, I'm not sure there was a popular demand for that, but that was the decision Hasbro made. But that battle pack, despite not having a lot of use, and um, with the Assassin Droid being quite difficult to set up, and when you open it, you lose all the little spiders. But these figures are quite popular. What have we got left here? We've got a couple of customs left. We'll bring in someone that um, the concept we created was that Rex has to answer to someone. Of course, he answers to General Skywalker. We're all aware of that. Uh, but he's got to answer to someone higher. So he's a captain, and it's not really established who the commanders are in the TV show. I know in the comics there's 
certainly other ones. Um, Apo, of course, becomes one later on, but he's not at the time. So we thought, well, who's he going to answer to? We always find that, you know, there's Commander Cody, and then Cody's got guys that are below him, although that's not established in the show either. So who, who did we think Rex would answer to? It have to be someone who'd be up in the cruiser with Yularen, um, overviewing the battle and so on. So we came up with this one. This is the Supreme 501st Commander. Uh, we've only got one name for him at the moment that we're considering, which is Fortis. Not Fortress, but Fortis. My brother suggested that name. Not sure where he got it from. He says he got it from uh, Dunkirk, the, the uh, movie. And that was what the pilot's unit was called. They were Fortis 1 and Fortis 2. Uh, we've got some little designs on him uh, with the skull on the shoulder. Nice blue design here. Helmet looking really nice. We took away the antenna on the side of the head. This is... Uh, probably because he wouldn't need to do too much in the field. Nice helmet design there. Getting some sporadic blues in there. He's got the one handgun. Uh, a couple of kill tallies from when he was out in the field. And some blue on the base there, just on his feet. Make him very distinguishable as he's a 501st member. So that's Fortis. He's a supreme commander. Or well, the major commander of the 501st is probably directly under uh, Anakin Skywalker and probably has equal rank to Admiral Yularen, who of course looks after the space fleet uh, that takes the 501st around. But that's Fortis. He's the one that we anticipate Rex would answer to. He's obviously got the custom uh, shoulder pad there. And just trying to think what figure he's molded off. He might be a maybe a fox body. I can't remember at this moment. But a Cody head with a removed antenna. And he might be the just the initial phase two Cody that came out. I don't believe his body. You couldn't twist his body. I think he had just a solid solid piece there. But there's Fort. There's a Fortis. Move him onto the side. One of our customs. Another one that everyone's very interested in. Obviously, he was brought in in, in uh, Season 7 when they went to Mandalore. Uh, but when we saw him, he had the Ahsoka painted helmet. And we thought, well, he had to, he had to have a different helmet before getting that. Uh, there is a picture of him in one comic, which was released probably six, five or six years ago, that just had him briefly on the side mentioned. Well, not him specifically, but a 501st captain uh, and this was the helmet that he had and we thought well Vaughn would have had to have had something similar before being promoted we can see here just a nice 501st tone the iconic eye and the center chest piece uh, the rank on the chest keeps his radio on the shoulder his backpack this is obviously a uh, Cody that we've customed um, but this was the design, just similar to what Cody had, similar to what the grey clones on Corazon. There's, there's a lot of pictures getting around of the captain. Uh, it's the same design. We've just added the blue just to simulate what a generic 501st captain would look like. And in theory, uh, what Rex probably should have looked like. But of course, they changed his, his, his design. Because Vaughn obviously is promoted to a captain and this is what he wears. So just food for thought, uh, if any of you are thinking of creating a custom Vaughn, this is what we believe he would have looked like. He's obviously got the gun there with the wire fire. It was a shame that he was killed so early on. I think they could have definitely uh, given him some more screen time and done some character development with him. But that's behind us now. So there's Vaughn. Another custom here. We've got no name for this one at the moment. It's just another simple design. We've put the blue on the inside of his arms rather than the outside. Something a little bit different. Starting to yellow a little bit on the body there, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. A little bit of work on the legs there. Just a couple of arrows. Uh, we've put in some arabesque on his chest. I've got it written down somewhere. I'll have to go back and look for that. A little bit of arabesque on the chest there. Nice, sleek helmet design. 
as you can see the yellow incoming unfortunately but you know these figures a lot of them are almost 15 years old uh, you can't expect them to remain perfect forever I think this is one of the slick or chopper figures that we customed over and they're great just just full white body armor the helmets fit quite well you can change the heads around you can paint on the heads they were a great figure particularly for customizing uh, i've been very lucky that we have probably let me have a look back here probably have about 30 or so between the slicks and the choppers uh, so we've got a lot of a lot of figures that we can use to create further customs no name for this guy yet as i said uh, definitely open to suggestions nice cool slick figure keeping it simple particularly with the helmet nice blue along the top of the visor two more to go another unnamed one a lot more blue on this guy uh, he's again slick or chopper uh, used as a base a lot more blue on this guy a lot more distinguishable you'll see him obviously a lot further from a distance really nice sweeping wings on the heads here take a look in from this side didn't quite get it down to the black visor line but we found if we went all the way down it would blend in and then you would start to think that the visor was actually sweeping up like that so still think it works still thinks it look looks good um, just to show you that they are slicks and fives and gusses underneath just another custom paint job for someone to consider if they want to add some to their collection again no name for him not just yet and our last one probably my favorite i think he's got one of the best simplest designs this gentleman here he actually has a name uh, which is piercer Put a bit of effort into this one. We've obviously got the line down the leg, the knee pads, or the knee guards, I should say. Uh, his intercom on his forearm, blue hands, or I think they're called uh, just the hand guards will be blue, elbows blue, shoulders blue, chest blue, nice strong prominent chest paint job there. He's got some arabesque on his thigh. Again, not sure what that says at the moment. I did have it written down somewhere. Uh, but if you get close enough, you can probably type that in and have a look. Uh, nice red triangle. On the head there, kept it slick on the visor. And a little bit of a shoot down blue heading down the bottom of the helmet there. Blue fin as well. And blue on the back of the shoulders there on the traps. So that's Piercer there. One figure that they didn't release, which I, you know, unfortunately was Dogma. Uh, you'd have to believe in theory that he had a phase one design as well. Uh, that they could have just thrown that in there. If they're willing to put all that effort into creating you know the the style and the artwork of for say fives and hard case i uh, sorry kicks and hard case and then of course jesse as well you'd have to think that doing the helmet design for dogma wouldn't be too difficult uh, but unfortunately we didn't get one of those again when we look at guys like mixer and red eye who had less than 20 seconds you know screen time in total uh, but dogma who had significantly more time couldn't get a figure uh, so just strange, strange I believe. There's a couple of other figures that got that got created off characters. There's a lot of bounty hunters and stuff like that who weren't massively integral, but they got created into battle packs. Uh, but yet guys like Dogma uh, couldn't. You know they didn't they, they didn't create a general Pong Krell as well, which again thought was strange. But anyway, that's been our review of the named figures that we have of the five hundred first. I believe we have them all uh, that were produced as well as created a couple of uh, customs for our own army here. We hope we've given you some good uh, ideas to use for your own. We've got many, many more videos coming of the collection here. We've got probably just over a thousand loose figures. Uh, and then I'll say easily another five to seven hundred in the boxes. Many battle packs, uh, lots of big battle packs. We've just not long got the big ATTE uh, in the open display quickly give you a quick look as I quickly fan here that's sitting just there that's a really lovely piece um, I suppose while I got you we'll have a quick look at the remaining 501st that's sitting here we've got lots of 
just a lot of white generic ones here. A few of the walkers in the back. Got our own 501st snow unit here. Freako figures very difficult to come across. We've got a fair few in the battle packs. This pack here. We've got the Echo. The Fives is around here somewhere. We've got a Unpunched. Return of the Sith 501st. And the Jesse here. Uh, there is more. This in the boxes behind me. And we'll get to them eventually. But I hope you've enjoyed this. And we've showed you the first bit of our 501st collection. And some named clones and some of the customs. Uh, and we look forward to the next video. So thanks for watching.